there's so much going on, isn't there? And I can't emphasise enough how important it is for people to join the UK PSC registry if they've got PSC. And as Palak said, um, ask your hospital if you can join. UK PSC is contributed to improving healthcare, improve, you know, working on guidelines, looking at what things work for PSC patients safely and so on. And helping us understand PSC. But the other thing is having this mass of PSC patients that we're all in touch with is so important for getting clinical trials into the UK. And I think it's because of, partly because of our unique healthcare system in the NHS and partly because of UK PSC, we're so lucky that we've got clinical trials coming now to the UK. I mean, it's fantastic. You can go to the PSC support website and there's a research hub. Just click on that and you can find the clinical trials. There's, I think, five or six ongoing at the moment across 18 different hospitals now in the UK. So it's absolutely brilliant. We're updating our map of, of which trials uh, are recruiting like more or less every day because it keeps changing because of COVID. Um, but yeah, just do keep checking there. And we've also published a uh, clinical trials guide today so you can download that and it tells you all about clinical trials what's involved how to get on them and um, what questions to ask and and so on now everybody wants a treatment for PSC and everybody wants to take credit for developing a treatment for PSC let's talk about ursodipsychonic acid in the first port of call so Simon mentioned about alkaline phosphatase now in the early trial of ursodipsychonic acid we saw a marked improvement in alkaline phosphatase activity and bilirubin. But unfortunately, despite showing a reduction in alkaline phosphatase on ursodeoxycholic acid treatment, those people who received the drug had worse outcomes, a higher rate of cancer, a higher rate of needing transplantation and death. Now, I'm not saying that means urso is dangerous, but what I'm saying is that this is one of the reasons why it's been challenging for us to find a treatment. We know that alkaline phosphatase, the lower it is, the better it is. But when that reduction is caused by a drug, it doesn't always mean that the outcome is better. So we need things in addition to alkaline phosphatase to tell us that a drug is working. There are lots of treatments on the horizon, and I'll finish off by highlighting some of the trials that the UK PSC are leading. Um, there are things that mod modify your immune system, things that change the way that your bile acids are handled, there are things that reduce the amount of scar tissue that's, that's being formed. And there are things that modulate your microbiome, the, the bugs in your gut. Now, some of you, and I'm, I'm, uh, particularly if you see Simon more so than myself, would have had what we call an ERCP. That's a, an endoscopy, a telescope test, where we look down inside your stomach and we look, to look at the narrowings in your bile ducts and try to open them up again. Now, what we don't know or didn't know up till recently is actually what was the risk of or what was the benefit rather of putting a stent in, a plastic or a metal stent in to keep your narrowings open versus just opening them up with a balloon. Now, if you focus on these two middle lines, when you actually look at the group who, uh, who with PSC who have a narrowing and a doctor has put a stent in to keep that narrowing open, that's this solid black line. And the closer they are to the bottom of the graph, the lower, uh, um, so the worse their outcome is. The line that's here that I'm highlighting with my mouse is just if they had a balloon, just if they had a dilation. And you can see there is no difference in um, the outcome if you open up a narrowing in your bile duct with a balloon versus using a stent. But the incidence of complications, or what we call SAEs, serious adverse events, was much greater in the group of people who had a stent versus those with a balloon. So it's my practice that if I'm asked for advice, I say, if you can avoid it, please don't use a stent. If somebody needs an ERCP, please do it. But try, if you can, to use a sort of balloon without a stent to just to, to open up the narrowing. Don't leave in plastic, don't leave in metal if possible. Now, what about drug trials? So there's a drug that's on the block called nor deoxycholic acid. It's a modified version of ursodeoxycholic acid. 
Now, very briefly, if you have erthrodeoxycholic acid, it has many beneficial effects on biology. It increases the amount of bicarbonate, so it reduces the acidity in your bile, and that is more friendly to your bile ducts, the part that's affected um, with PSC. What norurso is, it's a modified version of urso, and rather than going into your stool and then being recirculated, norurso is concentrated in your bile ducts and your liver. And that enriches the amount of uh, alkali, that enriches the amount of bicarbonate that's there, and it makes your bile le less toxic. It also has other beneficial effects. It reduces the scarring, it reduces the amount of inflammation that's in your bile ducts. And what we've seen is that compared to placebo, so a dummy pill, nor so at increasing dosages leads to greater reductions in alkaline phosphatase. These are results from a three month trial. We are now conducting a very large study across Europe um, where we are looking at years of therapy and not just at the blood test, but also at the amount of scar tissue, also how are you feeling in terms of quality of life? And does your imaging change? Do your, does your MRI look different with years of neurotherapy? So this is perhaps one of the most promising treatments that's been tested in PSC. And if you've not heard of it and you're keen to take part, please contact PSC Support and they'll put you in touch with the closest center. In a similar vein, there is a drug called o betacholic acid, and that reduces the amount of toxic bile that your liver produces. It has been shown that obetacholic acid, which we currently use for another liver disease, we're now testing it in PSE, also leads to a reduction in alkaline phosphatase, particularly at the higher dosage. Lower doses don't tend to have much of an effect at 12 weeks, but there is an effect at week 24, so around six months. Similarly, there's another drug called Silofexor, which works exactly the same, or pretty much exactly the same as obetacholic acid. And you can see big drops in alkaline phosphatase over three months. Again, this is data from a short-term study. We are now running a very large study of this over many years to see wh whether this particular drug improves things like scarring and the appearances of your MRI. Now, this particular study is very exciting for several reasons. Historically, it was impossible for anybody with PSC to do this trial if you had an alkaline phosphatase that is normal. Because we realize you're much more than your alkaline phosphatase, this is one of the first trials in the world that will let you in even if you've got normal blood tests, but there are other markers of PSC. Because this particular treatment is looking at slowing down how your liver disease progresses in multiple areas. Now, just to finish off, let's talk a little bit about the gut microbiome. So, what you can see on this particular graph are little dots. Now, what it shows you is that the bacteria in your stool or and attached to your bowel in people who don't have any form of PSC or bowel disease, what we call control, the green dot, that scatters very differently compared to the composition in people with PSC, which are the blue dots, and those with inflammatory bowel disease alone. Now, on that premise, the thought arises, well, what if we change the gut bacteria in people with PSC? Will that make a difference? Well, actually, if you take mice, so these are we do horrible experiments on mice, we do as doctors and, and, and researchers, and I do feel sorry for them. But it's led to several um, develop, uh, and, uh, um, uh, significant therapeutic developments. When you take a mice that, that we call GF, germ-free, so no bugs in its bowel, and you put stool in that mice from a healthy person who has no form of liver disease or inflammatory bowel disease, nothing much happens. But actually, if you put stool from some, a, a, a patient who's got PSC and colitis into that mouse, they start to develop scarring around their bile ducts like you all have when you've got PSC. So we can actually give PSC to a mouse just by giving the stool from you know, your stool to it. So this begs the question, what if, you, what if you use an antibiotic that targets the gut bacteria? What does that do to your PSC? Well, North America and some parts of the Middle East have used vancomycin, which is an antibiotic we use for treating gut infections. And we can see quite sharp drops 
in alkaline phosphatase um, with three months of, of ankylmycin treatment, both with low and high doses. We don't really know whether it's just to do with the gut bacteria. And there is some data to show that um, uh, vancomycin sort of alone sort of may not be enough and whether we should use it with other things. I'm very happy to announce today that one of my colleagues, um, Dr. Nabil Qureshi here in Birmingham, has been awarded some research funding by the European Crohn's and Colitis Group to take this further. And we're now going to be running a clinical trial next year using vancomycin in PSC and inflammatory bowel disease not specifically to see whether it affects your liver alone, but actually, does it help your inflammatory bowel disease? So this will be one of the first studies in the world to look at a specific treatment for, your, for the IBD associated with PSE, in addition to what it's doing to your liver. There is concern using long-term antibiotics of anything, for, for any reason, do we promote the emergence of resistant bugs? Do, does long-term antibiotics affect other things like kidney function? And these have not yet been shown in studies using vancomycin, and the risk is theoretical, but they do, the questions do need to be answered. But it is a question of having, not, of having too much bad bacteria or not enough good. When you take mice with, with PSE, this is what their liver biopsy looks like, and this, in essence, you want more red and less purple. But when you deplete that mouse of all its gut bacteria, so this is a PSC mouse, if you take away all its bacteria, a lot more purple emerges. So maybe rather than depleting the gut bacteria, you need to replace it. And this is why well, this is one of the other studies that UKPSC are leading the way. And we are trying to develop a way of delivering stool from somebody who doesn't have PSC or colitis to somebody who's got PSC and whether it can also not just uh, improve your liver blood, but make you feel better as well. This is something we're working together with Martine, Maxine, and PSC support on. So don't be like our politicians. Don't delay. If you've got PSC, approach your center, ask them, can I, take part, can I be registered to UK PSC? And I encourage you all to take part in clinical trials because much like the COVID vaccine, Unless we all take part, we won't find a treatment.